Well, I finally got it moving under its own electric power. However, it did take some time to get there. Um, I had to redo the hubs and the throttle and, you know, get everything configured. But anyway, you'll, you'll see. I'm going to go over all that here in the video. So enjoy. Figured out how to get this disc brake mounted on to this hub. But this disc brake doesn't come off. It's like almost like welded on there or something. So I can't pull it off. So I'm going to have to cut it off. Anyway, it's, it's going to be an interesting, uh, it'll be interesting. We'll see how this goes. All right, here's kind of a little update. So this is the old hub, or basically one that pulled off. This is the one I have cut down. And you can see I cut the old disc off. And then the new disc, the new brake disc, right like that. I did have to grind some of this down in here. It wasn't quite the right diameter. But once I did that, it sits in pretty nicely. I might have to do a little more grinding down into there to get it to fit more flush. But then I'll have to do some, they have to weld some bolts on that they can thread into or um, find a tap and die set I can borrow to, to do uh, some holes in there. But it's, it's turned out pretty good. I think it's gonna work really nicely. Super excited I don't have to uh, you know, machine a, some kind of a hub adapter because these are the old hubs. So I'm just using the hubs, or these are the new hubs, sorry, these are the new ones that came on the transaxle, the electric transaxle, and this, this hub came off the actual original tractor's axle. So, okay, so I have everything working now. Um, I have the rotors mounted on to the hubs, the original hubs. So I had to, you know, cut, like I just showed you, I had to cut the old rotors off. And then I had, I used a tap and die set to tap new holes. And this actually, it doesn't fit flush into the hub. It kind of fits right on top where the, um, where this opening is here, but it, it works out really well. And if you can see down here, I have this one all mocked up and mounted. It's not, I need to get a spacer on the back end still. But what I'm doing is I'm using a little sleeve because the diameter of this hole is a little too big for these axles. So I've cut, cut out this little sleeve just out of some spare tubing I had laying around. And I'll slide that in like that. And then I'll, you know, that gives me the right diameter. And then, you know, you have your key and uh, yeah, it looks like, it seems like it's going to work out. So we'll see. I'm excited that I got, this was probably one of the biggest issues that I had was figuring out the rotors and the hubs because I had, you know, four lug compared to five lug. So I'm really happy that I'm able to get this, uh, these rotors figured out on this axle. We'll see if it actually works. Once I had the hubs all figured out and mounted, it was time to use all the hardware that came with this axle to finalize and weld up the brackets. Now this was not too difficult but while I was placing and mounting it I just had to be sure that it was you know everything was aligned just perfectly because I didn't want to weld it all up and, uh, and then realize that it was not aligned. So I took a lot of time uh, aligning it and then I just tacked on these uh, these metal brackets that it came with and once they're tacked off, triple checked uh, the alignment, I went ahead and fully welded these on. look of it on its own wheels on the new axle it sets pretty good um, sets level there's no rake to it at all so I'm gonna put the top on and see see if it still sits how I want it to 
that's kind of what I'm testing right now to make sure that it's not, it doesn't have a big rake on it at all. And then from there, I'll have to disassemble everything and, and start painting and getting it ready for paint. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna get all the electronics hooked up, make sure it actually works. <laughs> Gotta get a new motor in there. Um, yeah, and do some more, you know, sanding and stuff like that. Then I'll get it ready to paint. So it's coming along, it's getting close. So I'd just like to show how I did the throttle. Um, it came with this foot pedal and well it didn't come with it I, I purchased this this foot pedal that it's pretty universal universal i will leave links in the description to to these parts you can even get these little foot pedals on amazon or alibaba um, anyway it, it connects to the controller quite nicely but i didn't want this you know plastic foot pedals you know to throw off the look of the original tractor so i kept the original foot pedal and then took off the little actuator that was used to variate the speed of the motor. And you can see as I press the throttle down, the foot pedal down, that's going to compress that little actuator down there to variate the speed. Now, one thing that I did have to do as well was, well, I had to do two things. I added this spring. And so that spring is gonna give more tension and make sure that the foot pedal isn't just gonna fall forward due to the weight, because that was happening. So I added the spring, and then I also added this stop, which acts as the lever for the spring. But that way, when you go forward, all the way forward, you hit that stop. And that way you're not putting extra tension on the plastic parts itself when it's fully compressed. I didn't want to step on the throttle or someone to step on the throttle as hard as they could and then just completely shatter that plastic. I wanted it to just solely be used for the throttle, not any kind of pressure or tension or torque. So. All that's done through the original parts of the tractor's foot pedals. So that's kind of how I did that and seems to be working out pretty good. Um, we'll see when I start actually test driving it, what happens and how it works. All right, for the first time, this is gonna be moving under its own power, all its little electric power. Now I have everything just kind of mocked up. It's not all fully assembled, but uh, just kind of alligator clips go into the electronics, uh, connecting some of the things that's needed to forward, reverse, on, off, forward, backwards. I do have the uh, throttle hooked up how I want it, and I'll go into more details about that, or I, I did go into more details about that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a work in progress, but it's on its way. Well, my first impressions as I got on and started to hit the throttle, I, I felt like it was pretty responsive and this is only the 500 watt motor that I have in it and I have a 1500 watt motor ready to install on here so it's going to be interesting to, to see the difference and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to keep the original 500 watt in there just to really see the difference and honestly like I, I'm not putting my you know foot to the floor here I'm just kind of trying to ease it out see what the first um, first drive and first ride looks like on here it does feel torquey it feels like it's going to have plenty of torque to you know haul little trailers around and things like that and i'm not i'm not worried about the torque at all i'm going to need to reconfigure a lot of the different wiring and just like where where i'm going to be putting the switches and stuff like that all that is going to need to go up on the instrument panel which is gonna to have to be completely customized because nothing fits with the original instrument panel. So it's gonna be interesting, but uh, I'm just gonna end the video here. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we are gonna continue on with this build process and slowly uh, see what we can do with it. I'm hoping to completely tear it down, get it all sanded and get, get it ready to be painted because that's really the next step is get it all put back together, painted up, looking nice. And then from there, I just need to configure all the wiring, put battery monitors on it, get the switches set up properly. So it might be two or three more videos before it's completely done, but enjoy and follow along.